Okay, welcome everyone to Home Education High School for an Alberta Government Diploma. This is probably um, the one of its kind open house um, that you will go to where you will find out a lot of information about a self-designed high school program that is not online and is not print-based. So <laughs> stay tuned, <laughs> gonna give you a lot of information tonight. So my name is Judy Arnell and um, I am a child development specialist and an education consultant. And my specialty is in brain and brain and child development. I have <laughs> never thought I'd homeschool my kids to high school. I thought, okay, um, we started out in grade two and we went to all the way through to about grade 10, unschooling, which is child-led learning through play, projects, traveling, all those things. And then when my kids hit high school age, I said, well, guys, what do you want to do? Do you want to do, do you want to get credits? Do you want to do a more formal program? Do you want to just keep unschooling? And all of them said, yes, they would like to get a high school diploma. So they did. So three of my kids have graduated university. Um, most of them did high school at home. Not, um, and as I'll explain, some of them did online courses. Some of them did more self-designed courses. So it was really a mishmash of a whole bunch of things. Um, so yeah, so I have three graduates from university, one's in a master's program, um, fourth child is in third year university, and fifth child is still deciding what they're going to do <laughs> when they grow up. <laughs> um, I am an author, I've written books on um, non punitive parenting. So I like to call myself the non punitive parenting master. And I'm also a non punitive education master. <laughs> So you can't be non-punitive in your parenting and, you know, threaten and bribe and punish kids to do the work in, in education either. It just doesn't work. So that's kind of our, our, uh, my shtick. We have a handbook, which explains a lot, but sometimes, you know, it just helps to hear things and see things. So feel free, write down your questions. We'll get to them at the end. Um, I'd be happy to answer them. So where do we start? Okay, all of you <laughs> have probably seen this before, but um, these are basically your four choices in education in this province. There is public schools or Catholic, which is under public. And um, then there is the independent school system. Then there's the charter schools and Francophone schools. And all of those three quadrants have to teach the Alberta programs of study um, curriculum outcomes. The only portion that doesn't is home education. Home education, you can choose to achieve the 22 outcomes of the schedule, which we call solo, <laughs> or you can choose to do the 1400 Alberta programs of study outcomes per grade. It's up to you. Um, in home education, it is the only quadrant that gets funding for parents. And you can also do a half and half or a part, part parent, part school program called shared responsibility. We'll talk more about that. So these programs are funded differently. And you know which program you're on by um, the code that's entered into PASI, which is the provincial um, way to, to uh, it's the way they sort kids <laughs> into their programs in, in Alberta education. Um, so these are 600, code 600 home education is the only program that gets funding. Now, they are governed under the home education regulations, which are also housed within the funding guide, the guide to education and the education act. Should have changed that, that's not the school act anymore. Um, and then everything else is school pretty well, except for shared responsibility, which is part home education and part school, but everything else is coded school, 
which means you decide nothing. The school decides everything. So let's look at your choices for high school. There's lots of reasons people choose home education um, from grades one to grade 12. There's lots of reasons. A high school is like a buffet of courses. So if you go into any high school, physical high school building, some high schools offer some courses and some high schools don't, or they offer different courses. So some high schools will have um, facilities for shop, for hairstyling, other high schools might not. They may have something different, maybe a digital photo studio or whatever. So children in high school chase the courses they want and want to achieve. Now, <laughs> these are pretty well the basic courses all across Canada. You can see in Alberta, English language arts is, is called ELA 30-1, but it's called different names in different provinces. But these are the course equivalents across Canada. Pretty well, all post-secondaries um, accept the same courses. They're quite similar. Chemistry is chemistry. Math is math. Social studies might be a bit different, but depending on the province, it can be very local and very specific to that province. So this is the home education notification form. If you're going to do self-designed home education, you would fill out this form to notify the school board that you are undertaking home education at high school. Now, this is not the form. If you decide you want to go with the government, which you can do this year, absolutely, you will not, your child will not get credits under the government, no notification or the notification only program. They won't get credits. It has to be supervised by a school authority. But the beauty about home education is you don't have to teach. Yay! <laughs> Which, me, my math ends in grade eight. I cannot teach beyond grade eight. So when my kids went to high school level, they either A, had to take an online course, B, did home education and we hired tutors, or tapped into the, the good goodwill of family friends, or they had to self-teach. And they did a lot of that through watching videos through Khan Academy, through looking things up on the internet. And it was fabulous practice for university. Fabulous. Self-directed study is the best. So like I said, you don't have to teach for any program on home education. What you're doing is you're the general contractor and you're retrieving your authority and your responsibility to provide your child's education. And then you can take that and outsource it to tutors, co-ops, nannies. Um, it can be student-led under um, more self-directed or any online or worldwide courses that are not Alberta government courses. Absolutely, they can do that. And then the children could write diploma exams, get Alberta marks and credits and be on their way. So just so you know, grades one to nine is grade by grade. But once you get to high school, it's like a buffet. It's by course, it's not by grade anymore. So it's very, very different. Now, section six of the home education regulations states that a student can submit a portfolio to a principal or a teacher of a school authority for a portfolio review and for acquiring marks and credits in those courses. That is allowed under the home ed regulations. So what that means is for many school authorities, a student would have to do a course proposal per course. So you might, um, say on the learning plan here, let's say the student's gonna do English language arts, you might put here, um, will be achieving Alberta programs of studies outcomes in to acquire credits in English language arts 10-1. And then you would attach a course proposal specifically for that course. So like I said, we were unschoolers. Um, we 
my kids played for grades one to nine pretty well. But here's the thing. If you're an unschooler, you are going to have to switch in grade 10. You can't keep following the 22 solo outcomes anymore. That has to switch to the Alberta programs of study outcomes per course for grades 10 to 12. If they want high school credit, if they don't want credit, go on, continue with the 22 solo outcomes till grade 12 until they're done. Absolutely. But you do have to switch over and meet a different set of outcomes for the high school years. The beauty is by age 15, a child's prefrontal cortex is a lot more developed in their executive function which means A, they have their abstract thinking skills, and B, they have much more self-developed self-control. So they're more apt to sit down and do independent study and independent work, much more motivated to pursue that paper-based work. So you don't have to stand over them with a um, <laughs> nagging and saying, you have to do this. If they want to do it, they will do it. Now, you probably didn't know this either, but all the major universities in Canada do not require a high school diploma for admissions, even for the competitive um, programs such as STEM, engineering, nursing. Um, none of them require a high school diploma. What they do require is grade 12 courses, certain ones, depending on the program, and depending on the competitiveness pretty good marks. <laughs> so just so you know, it's always best to check the um, admission requirements for the university your child's aiming for. So high school diploma, what's the point of it then? Well, um, if your child is not going to post-secondary, they may wish to have a high school diploma to go into the world of work I've heard that some places like if they want to be an RCMP officer, they do need a diploma, but for most parts, they don't. Not many people ask for a diploma. If they present the five grade 12 courses, usually that's enough. So a diploma is 100 credits. Of those 100 credits, 58 are the core subjects. And the rest are 42 credits for options and other things like COM, Phys Ed 10, which are mandatory courses. Okay. Here are the options. So for high school, you could do, your child could do home education and do one of two pathways. They could complete 12 years of education under the 22 solo outcomes and not get a diploma. That's it. And they're done. Or they can meet the course outcomes, the Alberta programs of study, get 100 credits under the Section 6 and graduate with an Alberta diploma under home education. Or they could do the school route, which is online classes, or physical classes or correspondence courses. They meet the same outcomes as here and graduate with a diploma. Now, when you go to school board open houses this spring, many will say um, you can't get a, or your child cannot get a diploma under home education. I've heard that so many times. <laughs> what they are saying is for their school board, children cannot get. They do not offer Section 6. That's what they're saying. They're not saying that another school board down the street won't offer it. They're just saying that they're not offering it. But it makes it sound like it's not offered through Alberta Education, where it actually is. Okay. So if you really want this, be sure to ask your school authority, do you support Section 6? home education high school for credits. And if they say no, then go to another board. Okay, so here's the program. So um, you probably already know this. Um, the three program types in, in homeschooling is home um, education, parent directed, 100%, 
or it's 100% school directed, which is distance education, or it can be part, part some parent, part some school, and that's called shared responsibility. Not every school authority offers shared responsibility. They have the option not to. Um, same with, they have the option not to offer section six at high school level. Okay, so just so you know, a diploma can be earned on all three programs, parent directed, school, or shared responsibility. Absolutely. This is my daughter's graduating class. It was very small, three students. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now here's, this is interesting. If um, on home, home education parent directed, there is no instructional grant because there is no teacher. The teacher is the parent. And as we know, parents do not get paid to teach home education. The only grant money is the $850 that goes to the parent and the $850 that goes to the school. On shared responsibility, it's kind of um, prorated as per the, the portion of what the school's delivering. When the school delivers part of high school, they get full funding for that. Um, the other thing too is, once your child has two school delivered teacher courses, which is about seven credits, then it slides from home education into that shared responsibility realm. And 100% shared school provided is called distance education. There's no home education part of that. Okay, now when you look at schools, when you hear about schools, when you go to their open houses, you're going to hear a lot about um online courses you are not going to hear so much about what i'm going to share with you tonight this is your only opportunity to really explore self-designed home education high school okay so this kind of outlines what i already talked about today so either you could do marks and credits or you could do no credits and just do the solos but if you do marks and credits, then you have to meet the Alberta Programs of Study outcomes. That means that you'd have to teach evolution in science because it's there in biology. And these are the 22 outcomes. Okay, so let's look at parent directed. Um, uh, we kind of already talked about this, yeah. Oh, okay. Under parent directed, what you your child could do if they're under 19 years of age. 19 it seems to be the the crossover age between more options. Under 19, um, they have to get a course mark. They can't just go in and write the diploma exam. They have to be over 19 years to just walk in and write the diploma exams without any course um, before it. So um, you can provide the program. You don't have to teach it. You can outsource it. Now, over 19 years, the student can just self-study off the grid um, and then can write the diploma exam. As well, this can be done under the notification only option with the government. All children can write diploma exams if they're over age 19 without a school authority. They um, can just go in and, and write it, pay $26. Okay, who supports section six high school for marks and credits under home education? These are the boards that do, and every year we get new ones, which is nice. So this year new is Murnam Outreach, Grand Yellowhead is doing it, providing it. So that's really good. Um, these are the boards that are not providing um, home education high school for credits. Okay, so um, this is a detailed academic report. So when your child starts acquiring credits in grade 10, they could actually start in grade nine by studying and then keeping all the work. And then when you sign up with a school authority for that grade 10 year, you can present the work and the child will get credits in that 
grade 10 year rather than the grade nine year. So basically your child could start earlier if you want. So this lists all the courses a child takes. As you can see, it has a course code, it has a name, it has credits earned and marks, <laughs> and the school year it's been taken in, whether it's a full year or a semester, and this is the school number that's reporting the marks and credits and the language. So they will have this for all their courses, even their repeat courses. But the repeats don't go on a transcript. This is what an Alberta government transcript looks like. It has um, the number of credits that was earned, whether a diploma was granted, and it's kind of like the DAR, but it only has the highest mark the child has done. So for example, if a child goes in and rewrites a diploma exam, it will have the higher mark on the transcript. And this is what universities and post-secondaries want to see, right? So you can see the school code is a school that's reporting those marks and credits. So when you do a course under home education, you present the work to the facilitator, they take it back, they make sure the mark constitutes the work or reflects what work's been done, and then they take that and report it to the government for the transcript. As you can see, nothing on here says home education, and this is for all home education students. Um, when universities get this, they have no idea this child has been home educated whatsoever because it's a school that reports it. Why don't some <laughs> school boards offer this? Well, it all boils down to this little green symbol here. <laughs> um, funding for online is the same as funding for a child in a school. So it's substantially, as you can see, almost 10 times higher for that school than for home education. And that is probably why um, you will never hear about this at school board open houses. Okay, so after age 20, on September 1st, your child is deemed a mature student in terms of Alberta education. Um, they can take any diploma exam without a prerequisite, course prerequisite. They can just walk in, pay their $26. Well, actually, they have to make an appointment <laughs> five times a year. And they can write that diploma exam. And that would stand for 100% of that course mark. And if it's a grade 12 course, which it is because it's a diploma exam, and the exam is only on the grade 12 course. It's not on the grade 10 or the grade 11 course, just grade 12. But they get retroactive credits and a P for pass for the grade 10 and 11 prerequisite. Yay! <laughs> now, they can also take a grade 12 course at a university, um, but um, they'll be paying big fees because they're no longer funded under Alberta education. So you want to be sure your child finishes by the time they're 20 on September 1st. The beauty about this is Bio 30 is a standalone course. It does not build on Bio 10, 20 or Science 10. It builds, but it, um, it's a standalone, which means you most a lot of kids just take that course and don't take the prerequisites. Same with English 30-1, same with Social 30-1. Chemistry, math, and physics do build up to those competencies, so I would recommend that they do take the grade 10, the grade 11, um, build up to those courses. Now, if they're under age 19, they, like I said before, they have to have a course mark and the course mark is combined with the final exam mark. So it's usually a 70% course mark, 30% exam mark split. Okay, um, I just wanna stress that homeschoolers are not looking for special, um, deals. <laughs> we just want to obtain credit for knowledge and skills and that they already have, right? So I'll use this as an example. This is my daughter. She um, never ever took a formal English course. Um, she loved English from the moment she was born. <laughs> she wrote four 
um, S, uh, novels by the time she was 16. She read books on character development and plot development and, and grammar and story. You name it. She did a lot of self-study. So for her to slog through an English 30-1 course um, would have been busy work, really. So we had the flexibility that our facilitator said, you know what, get her to write two personal response essays, two critical analysis essays, and we'll call it a course mark. And that's what she did. And then she had to write the diploma exam because everybody who wants credits in English and social need to write the diploma exams. She got 84% on it and she was on her way. So that's what we want. We want credit in high school for knowledge skills that your child already possesses. So it's high school your way. Not everything has to fit in a 125 hour course shell. Okay. Um, definitely, is this legal? Yes, it is. It's under Section 6 of the Home Education Regulations. Absolutely. Now, there is a bit of a difference between a parent-directed course review, portfolio review under Section 6, and between a course challenge. So course challenges are um, under the Guide to Education and the Education Act. And actually, I just learned that any student, whether in school or in home education, can do a course challenge. So a course challenge is basically the students already possess the knowledge and they want to um, get credit for it. In a parent-directed course, the student doesn't have the knowledge yet and is being taught the knowledge either through self-taught or through parent-taught and will present the work they have done. A course challenge is asking a school authority to test their already acquired knowledge. In my opinion, a lot of course challenges from high schools are so much work that you may as well do the course. It's just too many hoops to jump through. So it's up to you. And it's up to you to ask these questions of your school authority in what they would require for a course challenge, because again, it varies across school authorities. Okay, so parent directed, um, you can use a whole bunch of resources and that's the beauty of self-designed is it customizes to your child what they would like. It doesn't always have to be text-based. You can use um, library books, websites, games, movies, documentaries, online courses, audio materials, field trips, travel, anything that would help those children achieve the outcomes of the Alberta programs of study for those courses. One really essential, essential um, thing is to get the textbooks. Now, every high school course has a textbook. And with that, you can also buy the key study guide. These are really, really good to help the student zone in on what they're gonna need for the exam or the diploma exam for that course. So it's kind of a condensed um, workbook to work through um, the course. You could also get a group together. Um, social studies and English are great. We used to book once a week room at the library, which are free. Um, and we'd get the kids to view a movie or read um, something from the English language arts, and we get together and discuss it. And it was really nice as a social time for teens, but also as an ability to discuss what they were learning. Um, or you could hire a teacher. We did that too. We hired teachers. We split the costs among eight to 10 people. We had a once a week class. But we did it outside of, um, it was under home education. So we got to do what we wanted to do. It's really awesome. Okay, um, how do you assess these courses? You are the teacher, um, you are the parent. It's under home education. So you're the teacher. The school authority provides a facilitator. They do not teach. So you, basically assess what your child has done, what their um, 
what you can prove that they've done, and you can give them a mark. Usually it should be within 10% of what you think they get on an exam. Some school authorities uh, want the children to write an exam worth about 30%. But if you're the teacher, you have the right to see that exam before you give it over to a proctor to supervise your child, because you need to know that you've covered everything that they need to know for the exam. It's only fair. And it's what teachers in school do. Granted, they don't get to see the diploma exams, but they've seen enough diploma exams over 10 years of teaching that they know exactly what's on there pretty well. But you have the right to see what's on there and just make sure you've covered everything. Okay, so here's an example of um, a course. So this is an op options course, which is super easy to do under home ed for foods 10, 20, 30. We um, did photos, we listed what the children made. Um, and these are other ways you can assess, especially for those courses that obviously foods doesn't have a final exam. So this is a way we just had to document what he made. We included the pictures for all of these things. Make sure your child's in the picture. <laughs> and, uh, and then we covered off what it um, was under. So for, it's hard to see here, but for foods 2040 cake and pastry, um, we categorized what we made under cake and pastry. For foods 2050, bread, we categorized what we made under bread. And each, each of foods courses are only one credit. So you're actually doing five different little courses, 25 hours each for five credits, really. Okay, so like I said, you would still fill out a home education um, notification form, but then because high school is course-based, you'd have to put together some kind of proposal for the course and a summary of the course. So the proposal is outlining, it can be just one page, what you're gonna do, and then the summary is what your student did. And in between those bookends is all their work. And that's what you hand in to the facilitator so that they can assess that the mark you've given has been substantiated. <clears throat> now, where do you find these proposals? Uh, your school authority might have a proposal that they want you to use. If not, if you need a sample, contact me. I can help you out with that. Um, I have a lot of course proposals. Okay, why do you want to do parent directed? Well, there's a lot of reasons. You can, you, can, you can really substitute things. For example, when my kids did online English 30, they had to do King Lear, which they hated. <laughs> so you don't have to do Shakespeare in home education, um, English 30. You don't have to. You can substitute something else. In fact, um, you can use any text, any movie, any novel you wish, as long as the student can pull really, really good things out of it for their essays. So it's very, very personalized. For example, I'm just using this chemistry 30. If they did it online, there would be 36 assessments written in stone. If you did it under parent directed, maybe nine assessments. So, for example, um, you would do a unit test out of the key for each of the four big concepts, maybe do the practice unit test, and maybe do um, the final exam in the key or exam bank, maybe that, use that as your final exam. So, that is a lot more flexible, it's a lot more condensed, it's not as many picky little assessments as an online course would be. Okay, so um, okay, so this is basic how high school works. So each high school course right now is one to five credits. So one credit would be for 25 hours of study, five credits would be a 125 hour course or about 16 weeks if they were in a bricks and mortar high school. Each grade, children usually acquire about 35 credits. So they take each semester, they take about two cores, two options, and that gives them 
about 100 credits after three years of high school. You can use, we have planning charts on the Alberta Homeschooling website um, that will help you um, plan out what they would need. And also as your school authority would help you with that too. How it works is the courses that are numbered dash one are very academic and they're more for university entrance, but it depends on the program. For example, my son got into sciences at university, but with social studies dash two. Um, so, and my daughter got into humanities with dash two math. So it depends on what program they're going into. Generally, dash two is for colleges and tech schools and dash three is for trades and work. Um, so this is kind of the stream. I'm not gonna go much into this, but this is how it works right now is, um, so for math, grade 10 would be, sorry, <laughs> math grade 10 would be a common math, that C stands for common. And then they'd start streaming in grade 11 into dash one, dash two, or dash three. Okay, how long does parent-directed high school take? We found um, it took about one and a half to three hours a day, depending on what they were doing pretty well. Like I said, we did two or three cores, um, and you wanna pair a science with a social or an English, so they're not too heavy on the math science or too heavy on the writing for English social. So you wanna split those two up and then the options. So that's kind of what we did. And really one and a half to three hours a day is all it took us. If they did an online course, it was way more work, <laughs> took way longer. Okay, now diploma exams, they can write five times a year, January, April, June, August, and November. Um, they just have to pay $26, register on my pass, can go in and write it. And like I said, under 19, it accounts for 30% of the final mark. Over age 19, it can be 100% of the final mark or combined with a course mark. Whichever one is highest is the one Alberta Education takes. Yay! Isn't that great? Okay, so for post-secondary entrance, generally they're gonna need the four cores at grade 12 level and an option, generally, usually five courses. Or they could apply as a mature student over age 21, then they only need English language arts, 30-1 for higher mark than 65%. Now it depends on the program, like I said. And because they apply online, there's no fields for their volunteering, for their citizenship, for being a good person, for leadership, nothing like that. Uh -uh. It's only those five courses and marks. That's it. Okay, now again, too, they can also get their grade 12 courses at university, but if they do, they're not eligible for scholarships, especially the Alexander Rutherford Scholarship, which is um, $2,500 for grades 10, 11, and 12. And that's why they need course marks for um, grades 10 and 11 is because the, to apply for those scholarships, they have to have that. Okay, um, now that's the big deadline is once they're age 20 on September 1st, they are no longer funded in Alberta education. Yes, they can take the courses, but then they're gonna cost five to $600 each course for five credits. <laughs> so they may as well take them at university then <laughs> because they're the same price, right? Um, but like I said, you, they can start earning credits from age 14 to age 20. So basically all children get five years for high school, five years funded so they can spread it out, right? They um, a lot just do, um, spread out the diploma exam courses because they're the ones that really count because they're the ones that universities look at. So they may spread those out over two years and then bunch up grade 10 and 11. Um, others will do one year of online core courses. And then the next year, they'll do all the options and calm and phys ed through home education. And then the next year they go back do grade 11 core courses. And then the next year, they do grade 11 
options and under home education. So you're not locked in. You have lots of options there. You can chunk it year by year. Okay, let's see. Where do you get parent-directed curriculum to meet the outcomes of Alberta programs of study? I am going to just scooch over here. One of my favorite resources this year is learnalberta.ca. And you want to go to the T for T tab. Let me show you what that looks like. I'll scooch over there. Okay, not there. Here we go. Okay, so if you go, we're under, we're at learnalberta.ca. We're under the T for T courses. Pretty well, all the high school courses are here for the students. It's amazing. So let's look at Math 10C, which everybody in grade 10 math has to take. So you click on that. There you go. There's the course right there. So they open this up and they read it and then they open up introduction. That gives you all stuff there. And then all the units are here. Now they would need a mathematics 10C textbook, which you could try and get from your school authority, try and buy on Amazon, try and beg or borrow it from somebody. The list of all the textbooks needed for the high school courses is on the Alberta homeschooling website under high school. But look at this. So they do module one. So um, they scooch into that one. And they just read it and do the assignments. So there's one lesson. If they do one lesson a day, they probably would finish this course in four months, which is a standard. Um, and then they go to the assignment here. And it downloads right to their computer and they can do the assignment, save it. And then they have, by the end of the course, they have a whole folder of assignments that show they've done the work. They do the exams in the key and they're done. Present a course mark for the school authority to report on their transcript. Isn't that amazing? I love that. Okay, back to, how do we get back to Zoom? Oh dear. Maybe I'll have to close this again. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Um, now, if you're going to buy the keys, go through your school board because you, you can get a discount. You can get them for like $15 instead of the $30 they charge at chapters. Okay, back to... Here we are. Full screen. Okay. Um. Okay, now online, if they take it online, absolutely, you have no control over anything. They have to follow the perimeters of the online course. Absolutely have to, okay? So <laughs> here, my kids took Phys Ed 10 online before we knew better. <laughs> they had to do, back then they had to do 50 hours of writing assignments, which was unbelievable, and only 75 hours of actual activity. So why is online courses so much work? It's because they can't see the kids. Um, and so they need a lot of little, little assessments to make sure the kids are engaged, keep up with the work, and that they have lots of things to assess, being that they're not in a classroom looking to see if a student struggles or not. So definitely. Um, it's a lot more um, assignments and a lot more work for online courses. It's a lot less work for this. Okay, how do you begin? Um, so you register in a traditional home ed program. You print off the Alberta Education Outcomes. They're on the internet. So you see what they have to check off for each um, um, learning outcome for that course. And then you prepare your course bookends. Your course proposal should go in with your education plan by September 30th. You have to register by September 30th for this. Then you go and purchase a textbook and you follow through on the course. Well, you don't, the child does. <laughs> and then at the end of the course, you provide a summary for the facilitator of what they did, samples of the coursework, their assignments, their unit exams, things like that. And then in your summary, you give them the final mark and the facilitator will see if it, if it substantiates. 
So here, this is what the keys look like. These are really good too, student notes and problems. And they also put out a series called um, Problem Solved. Just to warn you, these are very in-depth. There are a lot of work. They're about twice the amount of work as the Learn Alberta courses. So, and they're pretty dry. So <laughs> um, this is what a course proposal looks like. So this is a proposal for English 30. So student name, how many credits you're going for, beginning date, ending date, outline of the project. So the student's going to read eight poems, read three short stories, look at six pieces of um, nonfiction, attend a live play, keep a personal journal not to be shared, watch a variety of multimedia, read two novels. We were ambitious. They only have to read one. Um, produce a text analysis, produce one personal response essay, produce one critical analysis essay, produce one poem, and read one Shakespeare novel. Whoa, that was ambitious. <laughs> Must have been for my first kids. And the resources we needed so we can get reimbursement funding, like Theater Calgary, um, Exam Bank, Book of Poetry, things like that. And then we did a course summary of what we actually did, including the work. And then I put down hours spent on the course, grade assigned by student parent, and then the student signature signed and the parent signature signed. Yeah. Keep in mind, kids at that age still need adult support. Okay. So you can't just say, here, here's your course, go do it. <laughs> They need regular check-ins because they need accountability. Even, even at that age, they really do. So this is how we presented our work. We put all our work in here. If it was photographs, I put it on a memory stick or some parents put it on a blog, things like that, right, for food studies. And then we submit it that way. So um, should I go much? Eh, maybe I won't go much into English 30. These are the textbooks needed for English. And for novels, short stories, and films, you can go on and search them for Alberta Education, English Language Arts Resources. They'll give you a whole bunch of suggestions for what to do for novels and films. Um, and, but really, it's up to you. You could do, your child could do The Matrix. My son did Crazy Rich Asians. You could do... Pride and Prejudice if you want, or you could do whatever. There's a lot, lot of ideas out there. Okay, social. These are the textbooks for social studies. If they're doing dash one, dash two, all the topics are the same, whether it's dash one or dash two. So if you don't have a really good reader, but a good writer, get them to read the dash two. If <laughs> you have a good writer and reader, dash one is the same content, but these are a little more academic presented. That wasn't very good grammar. <laughs> okay, math, 10 is 10. Um, so that's a common math. If they are going into a STEM career, definitely recommend pre-calculus 11, pre-calculus 12, which they would take in dash one, um, grade 11, grade 12. Dash two, if they're going into a humanities career or they don't know yet, um, or they struggle with math, maybe a dash two. These are these workbooks. Calculus is math 31. They can pick that up at university if they're going into a STEM career, or they can take it now. This is the math progression, kind of. Okay, science 10, this is a common. Um, there's four areas that they get a taste of in science 10 and by grade 11, then they stream. They can take chemistry 2030 or um, biology 2030, same textbook, by the way. Half, the first half of the textbook is bio 20, second half is bio 30, same with chem, same with physics. Calm, career and life management. That is a required course for a diploma, but um, you can have a lot of fun with this one. They don't have to do this online. It's so much fun. It's um, career, finance, and personal choices. There's three units in it. 
And um, for for things like this, we did, well, there you go, sibling fighting. That's a really good, <laughs> good unit under personal choices. Again, it's taking your life and turning it into credits. Um, so my kids did things like um, they did a resume, they did a Myers-Briggs profile on the internet, they did a career profile on the internet, they went to career fairs, open houses at SAIT, NATE, which was fun. They did a budget for first year university. Um, we did some practice in interpersonal communication, and they read the seven habits of highly effective teens and did a half page book report on it. That's what they did for calm. And um, also, if your child is getting um, help with learning strategies or um, if help with anxiety, that can also um, cover off calm credits too and outcomes, definitely. Okay. What do you do if your kids are stuck and you can't help? <laughs> you can hire tutors, can host a peer-to-peer -peer study group. There's tons of online videos at Khan Academy or Spark Notes that help them with English and math. Absolutely. How to acquire textbooks, borrow from your school authority, buy used off Amazon, buy, go to the Facebook groups for teens and see if parents, parents sell them for the, because if they have no more kids coming up, they're going to sell them for the, the, um, the next year. I talked about how to access those course modules. And this is an example of what we did to demonstrate food science. So we held up a sign saying what she made, what the course number was, a picture of them actually doing it, and then the final product. Okay, um, here's a good way. For example, we get a lot of parents saying, well, I don't know chemistry, I don't know how to market. All the, the exam preps are in the keys and the answers in the back. So um, every unit is in there and they usually include two final exams, which are really, really awesome. Awesome, awesome. Option courses. So they need CTS courses. They need... Um, 10 credits um, at grade 12 level. So we, since we had to do phys ed 10 anyways, we just carried on and did phys ed grade 11 and 12. It was just the easiest thing to do. You can do art, you can do French, um, you can do a shared responsibility registered apprentice program. So here's our food studies. This was a, <laughs> this is fun. This is a chocolate chess cake. And see, they show themselves actually doing the work and then the finished product. And we kept this on a memory stick. For Zed, we showed them doing the work and number of hours, we logged the hours. And work experience, um, my kids could do it for under volunteering, but now it has to be done under shared responsibility because the school has to supervise a safety course and a site visit. But you can use volunteer work. Um, we all our teens volunteered at the food bank. So whether you're shoveling the walks for neighbors or things, work experience is work experience. Special projects is an amazing, amazing, amazing thing. Um, that's 15 credits for your child's passion. <laughs> now they design the course. So um, again, you do a course proposal. We traveled, we did a basement renovation. One kid did a computer building and a coding for another course. So he ordered all his parts from Newegg and Memory Express, and he built the computer. And then he wrote a one-page write-up on what he learned about it. Those things are fun, and they're reimbursable. Um, one child did a, wrote a novel, and then for the next course, edited it. One child loved reading Terry Pratchett books and read all 40 of them. <laughs> that came to at least 125 hours. Um, beakerhead projects, we did one year. Um, we joined a homeschool beakerhead, put together a project, participated, and um, showed the pictures, got the marks and credits. So this is 15 credits right there. Yay! Um, now, this often isn't offered in a bricks and mortar high school because somebody has to supervise it. <laughs> and often it's off hours. So we just did the, we just showed the photos. There's our beaker head project. Here's the gaming computer building. 
here's our travel to a concentration camp in Germany. Art, again, art, um, meet the outcomes for different art mediums, do the art, show the work. And it could be different things from a comic festival costume to painting to whatever your child wants to do. It's amazing. You can do it with dance, music, all those things. Okay, and then there's kind of the school options, which is online, correspondence or paper-based, or physical classrooms or they just go to their neighborhood high school. They can do all that. Um, if your child just doesn't want to do the high school diploma, wants to just go into university, at age 16, they can apply to Athabasca University. They can take a year of courses, get really good marks, and apply to be a transfer student into a post-secondary program. Absolutely. So if a child's done a whole year of um, universities or colleges, generally the incoming universities when they want to transfer do not require high school transcripts. If it's less than a full year, they often want to see the high school transcripts and the university previous as universities transcripts. So, but just they should get good marks. If your child's not going to get good marks and is going to party, then <laughs> maybe that's not the best way to go. And this is where I talked about chunking it, you know, over the five years, um, alternating maybe between school provided and then parent led home ed, then back to school provided, then parent led home ed, maybe one year shared responsibility. You can do all those things if you want. Absolutely. Now, let's say your child's not motivated to do high school. You don't have to start at 15. You have five years. Your child could start at age 17 or maybe even 18, depending on their birth date. <laughs> now, if your child turns 20 on September 3rd, they have that whole year funded again. I, I had a son who was birth date was September 4th. He had a whole other year almost of, of um, funded high school to do it. Now, if your child's birth date is August 30th, make sure they're done by September 1st. <laughs> the other thing is to um, keep in mind, age 17 is when they take that final leap of development in their prefrontal cortex. And that is called self-control. And a lot of kids by about age 17 are ready to buckle down and do the work, even if they don't wanna do the work, but they know it gets some credentials. So, um, they may not be there at 13 or 14 or 15 or 16, but by 17, and they still have three years of funded um, time to, to get their high school diploma. Can parents override teachers' recommendation for course selection? Yes, always, always. You have the right to direct your child's education, whether in a physical school or home education. You know your child's abilities best. You can do it. Um, I talked about this, you need course marks for grade 10, 11, and 12 for scholarships, because otherwise kids could just study, write the diploma exams, and be on their way. A lot of unschoolers are totally off the grid from kindergarten to grade 12. They just do their own studying. They uh, make sure their studying meets the Alberta programs of study, but they don't have to register with the school board. They can notify with the government be off the grid totally, and sign up for those diploma exams, write them, be on their way. Absolutely. But they won't get scholarships. That's the only problem with that is because they won't have course marks. They'll have a pass and credits. If you have a child with special needs, um, you probably need to get documentation for grade 12 accommodations for diploma exams. And most post-secondary Schools want that documentation within three years of application. So that's probably a good time to do it. I'm not gonna talk about that, I'm running out of time. Um, <laughs> when your child gets marks and credits and wants to go to university, they would fill in their courses. See, you can see those food study courses there. So they fill in the courses and the marks and that's all that Apply Alberta wants to see is courses, marks, that's it. Done. Um, and then if they're going to a institution in Alberta, each institution will pull 
from Apply Alberta. They do not have to fill that out for every place they're applying to. If it's an out of province institution, um, say it's University of Victoria, then yes, the University of Victoria will request a transcript from Alberta Education. That's why it's very difficult to do a parent made up transcript. They want a government transcript. And the students um, put all the input into this. So like I just said, it's just a course name, whether it's completed or in progress, the mark, the credit, when the date will be completed, and it's up to the student to come back and put in the mark when they're finished. And that is what goes into their Apply Alberta application. Now, some colleges and locations will accept a parent transcript, so um, you know, they could be doing that, absolutely. I thought this was really neat in that um, this was the University of Calgary, and they asked, did you follow a homeschooling curriculum? Homeschooling does not include distance education or correspondence study, but private study that is independent of your local school board or district. So <laughs> they're looking, and that's right up there with the IB question and the advanced placement question. So they're looking for self-directed learners. Yay, 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 yay. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about any of this because we're running out of time. The beauty about this is these are the years that matter, high school, and especially the grade 12 year is what matters. And a lot of kids who have been to school since they were two years old are burning out from 16 years of institutional school. And that's when you wanna get them revved up for high school, not revved down. So it helps to have um, a self-designed high school program. Lots of benefits. Okay, this is it. I've spoken for an hour. I'm sure a lot of you will wanna go. Um, I'm going to um, turn off the recording and thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I'm gonna take questions, but feel free if you have a question that you wanna ask and you have to get on with your day, um, this is my email. Feel free to, to contact me and, and please watch this again. Uh, share it with your partner, your teens, <laughs> anyone you well, know, it will be posted on the Alberta Homeschooling website. So thank you very much. Okay, if you have questions, feel free to add them to the chat box. I'm just looking for the recording button. Here we go. So you file the learning proposals with the school authority that you sign up with prior to September 30th. September 30th is count day. That's the day that um, you sign up with the school board and that's the day you get um, into the system for funding. If you can sign up after that date, if they'll take you, but you won't get any funding. Yeah. Tamara says, T for T requires login information. Um, you would ask your school authority for the login information and the password. They should offer that. Um, Alberta Homeschooling has asked the province to open that up to all students, even in home education that are not registered with the school authority. And they said that the licensing requires teachers to have their students log in. So it's not, not for those who are um, notification to the government only. Yeah. Okay, another question. Uh, Tasha says, what are your thoughts on challenging exams for credits? Um, that's great. I think if, if, you're, if your child has done the self-study, they know a lot about the subject, um, don't make them do the busy work go right to the exam. If you are quite sure that they're going to do it, get them to do the exam, get it out of the way. Then they can spend their time working on something that they may need to do more work for. So absolutely. Okay, Tasha also said, something that may be helpful to others, my grade nine found that some online CTS courses that can be submitted for credit. Ooh, 
SafeGen provides online safety courses for credits with a certificate at the end, and the SPCA offers a few AGR credits. Yes, absolutely. If you can do some of that work out in the community, great. Just like special projects or even for core courses, if you can do work in the community. But again, you got to put that in your course proposal. So um, your school board accepts your proposal, right? So, <laughs> so if, if they're okay with that, then that's good. Okay, another two home ed school boards charge buddy for high school. Oh boy, okay, that's a tricky one. <laughs> so um, some, some have, here's the problem. The home ed school boards or the school boards only get $850 for supervising your child's program. And because high school is a lot more in depth than just meeting the solo outcomes under those 22 solo outcomes, it's a lot more in depth. So the problem with that is if you're submitting four courses per semester, they have to hire a teacher to go through and substantiate your mark. It takes about three hours per course to do. So they don't get enough funding to do that or offer that. A lot of um, school boards do it without charge because it's a very small portion of their home education demographics. But some of the smaller independent school boards don't have that economies of scale. So they have to recuperate their teacher time somehow. So that's probably why some do charge. Okay, Sarah says, one of my questions is always how to mark essays and then the practical learnings of field trips, movies. Again, um, I would not mark things like field trips and movies. I even um, have built in attitude marks for my kids. If they're not going to grumble, they're going to do their work. I give them 20% full marks for attitude. Um, Essays for me is very difficult because I find it hard to write. Um, I'm not a good writer, so it's I'm not a good judge of essays. Those are things I would hire out. I would hire a tutor or a teacher to mark an essay, maybe get two marks, and then take the average of them and then submit that. That's what I do. Yeah. Okay, Sarah says, help me understand why a diploma is important. Traditionally, I think it is, but I need to understand why if post-secondaries don't require it. Okay, Sarah, why does everybody say, yay, high school diploma? <laughs> um, basically, it's a way to mark the end of 12 years of education. It's like a capstone, but if it's not needed for post-secondaries, it's not as valued out there in the big world. Um, Quite frankly, my personal opinion is post-secondary credentials are now the new high school <laughs> because we live in a tech society and, and so many jobs require more than a high school education. But it is, it is valued because it's just a way to mark that someone met a benchmark of grade 12 high school. That's it. That's why. So a lot of home education students don't do a high school diploma in a nutshell. Okay, Tiffany says to get into the T for T section. Yeah, okay, we answered that. Sarah says, um, March was full of lambing, so art didn't happen this month. We had night checks and very early morning checks. Whoops, <laughs> okay, I didn't think that was for me. Um, okay, we did that, did that. So a question is, studying from the Learn Alberta courses, would it still count for credits if this is what the proposal proposes? Absolutely. Those Learn Alberta courses are Alberta education's 
courses. <laughs> They're absolutely, they follow the units, they follow the outcomes. Um, they're wonderful. So I would, I would put that into your plan that that's the course you're going to follow for those courses. Absolutely. Yes, Becky, it's recorded. So you can watch this again. Um, I can't, uh, this, which school boards offer section six is on our website under our high school tab. And it's constantly updated as we add more and more. So if you go to the high school, you will see the list of those schools that do offer section six right here. There you go. Okay. Um, Tiffany says, I know there are oodles of one credit courses offered by Alberta Ed. Is there somewhere I can view a list of all of them? Tiffany, I would go to, I would Google Alberta Education um cts courses and the cts will give you a whole list of of what the courses are as well as the outcomes that need to be met one thing i want you assure you is for example food studies there are a certain set of outcomes that are in each food study course that are all the same so once a child has done that they've done them in all the courses right? So all the food studies courses. So there's a lot of duplication of outcomes. So don't let the list throw you off. It looks daunting at first, but once you get into it, um, I remember I printed off the list of outcomes for career and life management, and it came to like 60 pages. But once you get into it, you think, oh yeah, my kids know that. My kids know that. They know that. They know that. It's, it's really a lot of duplication and a lot of detailed things. Absolutely. Okay, Nishia, my daughter has medical issues and has been homeschooled for the last few years. We live in a small town. The only high school in town is a different board than our homeschool board. I would like her to audit a class. Yes, go for it. I would just ask. Um, the worst I can say is no, but yes, go for it. Absolutely. What if your child is not planning to go to post-secondary? Is it still important to get a high school diploma? Again, I would say be aware that after your child is age 20, if they do want to pick up courses to go, then they have to pay for them. <laughs> or they can just self-study and write the diploma exam for $26. If, if your child is a self-studier a lot are very motivated and can do it a lot of kids can't do it um it might be a bit more costly after age 20 but if they're not planning to go to post-secondary um you can put it off for sure you don't have to get a high school diploma either you can make a parent homeschool high school diploma with transcripts and that would suffice to for her to apply for jobs because a lot of jobs and the work world ask for diplomas they want to know if you have a diploma and um and you can name yourself a school you can say i'm the arnell academy <laughs> maybe not use your last name but <laughs> the sunshine academy yay <laughs> and and put together a transcript like that and it's a homeschool transcript if they've put things on they've learned and has personalized to them and you they can say on job applications yes i have a high school diploma from the sunshine academy hey um Ian says, do you know of any school authorities that are known to be better at accommodating special needs? Um, not really. All schools have to provide certain accommodations for the diploma exams. Um, I have found much more luck getting real accommodations at university level. My, my kid got um, grants, they got a learning strategist, for them, they got tutoring for them, they got grants to, for, to have their textbooks scanned and read to them. There was a lot more supports at post-secondary than they ever got at school, which is why we homeschooled. So things may have changed, but I'm not too sure. I think you gotta do your research there. 
Okay, we got about five minutes left. Any last questions before we sign off here? Okay, one of the questions, does one of your books cover everything you talked about tonight regarding the know-how and steps we need to take in home education high school? Um, my Unschooling to University book talks about how to put together a high school portfolio, um, what kids would need to do for social studies, like ways they could learn social studies, geography, history, things like that, because it's more written for a worldwide audience. The homeschooling handbook also covers um, a lot of what I talked about tonight. Also, the high school tab of our website talks a little bit of, of what um, I talked about tonight. So I'd say the ha homeschooling handbook and the our website here. So for example, here, there's a sample English 10 course proposal. Um, here's the list of suggested textbooks. Um, what else? A key. I'll have this up here. Here's a course, a home education learning plan. <laughs> High school course details. So this is um, this is how to do it, really. Oh, maybe not. Okay, not that one. Um, anyways, there is a lot of resources here. Here's where the outcomes are. Here's the planning sheets. Typical four year program sheet. So here's a planning sheet of what you could do for grade 10, fall, winter, grade 11, grade 12, grade 12 spread out of two years. So look at these resources, how to set up a high school course co-op. I did that. Um, that's a really good one. And Yep, pretty well here. <laughs> okay, last question. Uh, what do you suggest when a student's struggling to keep up completing grade nine and is developing a negative view of schoolwork, even though school year is almost over? Oh, dear. That's too bad. Um, I would say, you know what? Maybe the summer will be better because <laughs> um, grade 10 is where you really want them to start gearing up because those are the years that count, right? For scholarships and, and definitely grade 12. Grade 12 is the year that counts for post-secondary. Um, they don't look at grade 10 and 11 marks. They only look at grade 12. So, um, Maybe what you might want to do is um, you could give her a semester off, maybe just a break to unwind and de-school and then start next Christmas, after Christmas. But um, yeah, if, if you do it self-directed, you can sit down with your child and sit with them and say, here's what we need to do for this course. What do you want to modify? Is there something that appeals to you more? Do you want to do something differently? They have a lot more buy-in this way. And the good thing about buy-in is that they're more agreeable to doing the work. Um, absolutely. And, you know, if she's only 14, 15, you could take a year off and just let her veg for a while. <laughs> it's up to you. I don't know how you feel about that, but yeah. You know, because they do, they do really need to, to do better in, in high school. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's kind of our, our thing tonight. So again, if you have any more questions, feel free to contact me. Um, thank you for coming. It was great to see so many people and I will put this up on the website so you can, um, you know, if you have friends whose kids are struggling in school, um, they can do, they can get high school credentials this way too. Anyone up until age 20 can get high school credentials. They don't have to drop out of high school. They can do a more personalized high school online is not for everybody absolutely not so
there's much, much, much more personal ways to do high school. So, all right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye-bye, everybody.